Uh, I think most everybody knows me or knows who I, uh, who, what we are, but um, I'm the chairperson for the Natural Resources Committee. So I was just going to give you a, the two second soundbite about who we are. So go back real fast. So these were volunteers. The Natural Resources Committee is 100% volunteer based committee. Uh, myself, I'm the chairperson, Bill Deckel, Carrie Carter, Lauren Jennison. Uh, who else do we have in the audience? Eric Weck, Steve Matravers. Uh, we've got Adam and Janine McMillan, John Frankenthal, Tom Dickinson, Jim Cleason. And um, we've, we've been in existence for about, I think it's been almost 15 years now. So we're 100% volunteer. So one of the things that we do is we promote the environment. And that's one of the things that we're doing tonight is we're providing a platform for Karen Miller to talk about what she's doing with the Fox River Trail. And then Eric Weck to talk about the bike uh, work that he's doing. But we help to initiate and develop the gardens that are out in front of City Hall. We sell rain barrels. So if you're interested in a rain barrel, we sell them for $75. We run the Earth Day event out at Peck Farm Park. Uh, we celebrated our 10th anniversary for that this year. We get anywhere from five to 1,000 people come out for that. We have vendors, uh, different information you can pick up. Uh, it's a great event to uh, bring electronics to be recycled, paper to be shredded. We hold the Fox River Cleanup Day in the fall. Hi guys, welcome. Another, another three of our members, two of our youngest, they're members in training. <laughs> uh, we hold the river cleanup day. We walk literally from Geneva to Batavia and, and pick up garbage. We are helping, this is probably the biggest thing that we're doing right now, we're helping to rebuild Geneva's urban canopy. And so this is us, our first year, we're looking around trying to figure out what trees need to be replaced. And what we found through the city is that they have about 2,800 parkway trees that are uh, coming out because of Emerald Ash Borer. Just in the parkways alone, 2,800 green ash. And so the Natural Resources Committee about four years ago pledged to help rebuild that urban canopy. And so we realized we need a whole bunch of money if we're going to help replace 2,800 trees. And so we do this really fun thing called Wine, Cheese, and Trees. It's a fundraiser. We did our sixth annual just last year. It happens usually at the end of March. Uh, we get anywhere from 150 to 225 people come out, and last year we raised almost $20,000, roughly, um, with 200 and some people. We've got live auctions, silent auction, raffles, live music, food, appetizers, and it's a lot of fun. It's out at Peck Farm, or it's out at uh, the Personal Recreation Center. So this is what we do, and then with that money, we do this. We've given two checks. It should have been three because we didn't do a third one, but. In worth $10,000 worth of trees to the city so far and we're planting another 20. Uh, there's flags out there for 20 right now and we're going to do another 20 this fall. So this is what the Natural Resources Committee does. We're all volunteers. We have a lot of fun. If you're interested, um, sign your name and an email address to there. We'll, we'll let you guys know. But every the first Wednesday of every month, we're right here. It's an open meeting to the public. You can come in, uh, hear what we're working on. We've got an agenda. We go through it. And, uh, and that's who we are. So with that, I'm going to, oh, and this is one more thing that we do. We also take down trees. So I'm the steward for Fabian Preserve. So if you're ever interested in doing something on a Saturday for three hours from 9 to noon, uh, right now we're out pulling garlic mustard, but we, we cut honeysuckle and buckthorn, and we're clearing, hopefully someday we'll clear out the whole 200 acres of woodland out at Fabian Preserve. So just drive by and see the woodlands being opened up. Those are all being done by, by volunteers on a Saturday for three hours. It's, it's the most fun you'll ever have cutting trees down in the woods. Um, and so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Karen Miller, who's going to talk about and walk through her work on the Fox River, the National wa uh, Water Trail for the Fox River. All right. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And thank you, Jay, and to the Natural Resources Committee for inviting me to come out and talk about one of my favorite projects, which is the Wisconsin-Illinois Fox River Water Trail Initiative. I'm Karen Miller. I'm a planner with the Kane County Development Department. I've been with the county for almost 17 years, and um, I am also active with the Fox River Ecosystem Partnership, which I'll talk more about later, for approximately the same amount of time. And so tonight I'm going to talk about our project, the Wisconsin-Illinois Fox River Water Trail Initiative. Let's see, can I go?
go back. Okay, so I'm sure that we are all familiar with the National Park Service and the great things that they do in terms of creating, managing, and protecting our national parks, which um, include a lot of our natural resources. And some people think that the national parks are America's best idea, and I have to say that I tend to agree with that. And I think we're also familiar with a couple of the favorite big parks, the uh, Yosemite and Yellowstone, and one of my favorites is the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore, which is a park that is not too far from here. It's within a two-hour drive in Indiana, and um, it's a beautiful area, and if you've never been out there, I think you should check it out. This is a map of all of the national parks in the United States. As you can see, there are quite a few of them. And I think this is a fairly new map that the Park Service has put out, and I've used it more than once to plan vacations. And if you have a fourth grader in your family, the Park Service has a program where, where the fourth grader and their family can get in for free. Uh, this was introduced during the centennial of the Park Service last year, and I understand that it is going to be a permanent type of program. So take advantage of it if you can. The National Park Service has a number of other programs besides protecting and taking care of our national parks. And the one that I would like to talk about this evening is the National Water Trail System. The National Water Trail System is a distinctive national network of exemplary water trails that are cooperatively supported and sustained. According to the National Park Service, the definition of a water trail are recreational routes on waterways consisting of a network of public access points that are supported by broad-based community partner partnerships and provide both conservation and recreational opportunities. The emphasis of the program being on recreation, partnerships, and conservation. The National Water Trails Program was established to encourage stewardship to take care of our rivers and the lands around them, to increase access for the public to our rivers, and to enc encourage support by broad-based community partnerships, including um, government, profit, nonprofit organizations, and also residents. In order to have your trail be a part of the National Water Trail system, you need to include the following best management practices. First, to uh, provide access to a variety of recreational opportunities, like canoeing, kayaking, swimming, fishing. Also, opportunities for education, for the public to learn about the value of our water resources that the rivers provide. Also, the cultural heritage that exists along our rivers. Learn boating skills so that you can be out on the river safely and also to experience outdoor ethics so that the rivers and the lands around them can be provide, pr protected for all of us. Also, conservation strategies to enhance and restore waterways and the surrounding lands. Provide public information about access and trail routes along and next to the rivers. Also, cultural and historic amenities natural features, such as in this uh, photograph, I'm showing the Dayton Bluffs, which is down north of Oswego. And it's a piece of land that is owned by the Conservation Foundation, and they've purchased it to protect it and manage, manage it, and it's a beautiful area, quite different from the shoreline of the river in this area. And also to provide information about hazards, such as the several dams that are on the Fox River. Community support and advocacy for maintenance and stewardship. Also along those same lines to plan for routine and long-term sustainable trail maintenance. So once the trail is established, it can um, be taken care of and enjoyed for years and years ahead. And also to provide planning. Create a vision for, your, for the water trail which includes desired future conditions, such as if, if there's an area where we would like to see additional access sites or even improved access sites, we would include that in our plan. And also to strengthen the best management practices that I just mentioned. 
So if you've created your water trail and you're interested in applying for designation for the National Water Trail System for, by the National Park Service, there are certain criteria that you need to follow. First, the trail and its access points must be open for public use and be designed, constructed, and maintained according to best management practices I just mentioned and in keeping with the anticipated use. The trail needs to be in compliance with applicable land use plans and environmental laws. As you may know, there are a number of municipalities and counties and uh, park districts, forest preserves, and even townships along the river that have their own land use plans. And so the water trail would need to take those into consideration. And the trail designation must be supported by the landowners, both public and private, on which access points exist. So along the Fox River, there are quite a few access points, a lot of them being public, but there are some that are private, especially in the Chain of Lakes area. And so we need to look at those that are owned by private landowners and see if they are interested in be being a part of the water trail and allowing uh, public access on their site. So if you are designated as a national water trail, you are designated by the Secretary of the Interior or the Secretary of Agriculture. Your water trail needs to be managed by a local management entity, either local, state, or federal government agency, a nonprofit organization, or an interagency organization, possibly the Fox River Ecosystem Partnership. Property ownership along the river remains and none of the property is acquired by the National Park Service. The benefits of being part of the National Water Trail System are that you are designated by the Secretary of the Interior, you enjoy national promotion and visibility. The National Park Service has a special website for the National Water Trail System, and I would encourage you to go on that website and, and look at the 20 or so existing water trails that have been designated. You can go in and find out information, links to the actual plans and maps of the different water trails. Um, one of the recent ones is the Kankakee River, which flows through Indiana and Illinois. Also, mutual support and knowledge sharing for those that, um, that partner along the river to learn about what's going on in their area. What can we learn? What good things can we share and do together? Opportunities to obtain technical assistance and sources of funding. Even though the National Park Service doesn't have any funding for this program, they do offer technical assistance and they do provi provide a list of funding sources if you want to apply for grants, etc. Positive economic impact from increased tourism. In fact, up in the uh, Waterford, Wisconsin area, we're already seeing one business that is opening due to the development of the Fox River Water Trail. Um, a young lady is taking advantage of assistance from the village of Waterford. She's opening up a canoe and kayak rental, and the village is letting her use the land that they own next to the river as sort of an incubator for her business for the first two or three years. So we're pretty excited about that. Stewardship and sustainability projects along the river. Increased protection for outdoor recreation and water resources to, to um, improve on the water quality along the river and also the land along the, the banks of the river. Improved public health and quality of life for those that get out on the river, get more exercise, like I mentioned, improved water quality. Access to networking and training opportunities that are offered through the National Park Service, and also recognition and special events that come from the Park Service. <clears throat> So now I'd like to talk more specifically about the Wisconsin-Illinois Fox River Water Trail Initiative. How did this initiative come to be? <clears throat> As I mentioned before, I've been active for about 15, 16 years with the Fox River Ecosystem Partnership. This is a partnership that was created by the Illinois Department of Natural Resources back in 1996, and we just celebrated our 20-year anniversary last year. 
with the purpose of promoting, preserving, protecting, and enhancing the natural, cultural, economic, and recreational resources of the Fox River watershed. Now, the IDNR created um, over 40 of these partnerships um, in, the, in Illinois. And over time, because of funding and other reasons, a lot of them fell by the wayside. In fact, FREP is one of the last two or three partnerships in the state that is still remaining. And we are a very strong organization. In fact, in 2016, we had our highest level of membership in our 20 years. And so we're going strong. And if you're interested, I would encourage you to check out our website at foxriverecosystem.org. Our partnership is a diverse group. We're made up of landowners, businesses, nonprofit organizations, agencies, and governments within the Fox River watershed region. So for the past several years, FREP has wanted to partner with the Southeastern Wisconsin Fox River Commission, which is a commission that works in the, in the Wisconsin part of the Fox River watershed. And so what we did was we got together and five years ago, we started holding annual Fox River summits every March, beginning in 2013. And they're held up in Burlington, Wisconsin, and it's a, a full day of, um, of speeches and presentations and networking and vendors that come and join us. We have usually about 150 attendees that come for the day and we get to talk about um, different topics, things that are going on in the Fox River watershed in both states. We get to know each other and learn about other projects. And so um, this year, like I said, we celebrated our fifth annual Fox River Summit. And if you think that's something you might be interested in looking into, when we get closer to the date, uh, check out the FREP website. The next summit is scheduled to be held on March 23rd of 2018. <clears throat> so in 2014, at the second summit, one of the speakers at the Fox River Summit was Angie Tornes from the National Park Service. And she talked about the National Water Trail System and what's called the Rivers, Trails, and Conservation Assistance Program. <clears throat> Now this is a program that is meant to, um, oh, I think I'll go back. This is a program that will provide assistance to those who are interested in creating a water trail. So as she was talking, there were several of us sitting at the FREP table and we were starting to get excited about this idea. We were learning about other water trails that had been created across the country, especially one um, along the Rock River, which flows from Wisconsin into Illinois. And that water trail was uh, recently designated about three years ago. And so we got excited about the possibility. We started talking amongst ourselves and we thought, well, maybe we could create a water trail for the Fox River in Kane County. <clears throat> so we invited Angie to come to one of our FREP meetings and learned more about it, told her we might be interested and she told us, well, really the National Park Service would like you to create a water trail for the entire length of the Fox River, which is 223 miles, uh, starting up in, the Wis in Wisconsin and ending down with the confluence with the Illinois River down in Ottawa. So in the meantime, there were others that were also getting excited about the prospect of creating a water trail. One of them was the Southeastern Wisconsin Fox River Partnership, which is a similar organization to FREP up in Wisconsin, and also the Village of Waterford in Wisconsin. And we got together and discovered that we had the similar value or feeling for the Fox River, that we appreciate the value of this resource and provide access for all to enjoy, instilling pride and encouraging conservation of this beautiful river. So I mentioned the River Trails and Conservation Assistance Program. And this is a program through the National Park Service, which Angie Tornes is a part of, that supports community-led natural resource conservation and outdoor recreation projects across the nation. 
And so the next step, if we wanted to create a water trail that the National Park Service might be interested in designating, we needed to apply for technical assistance from the Park Service, which we did in August of 2015. And then in October, we learned from the Park Service that our application was accepted, and we were going to start receiving technical assistance from Angie. So from then on, we've been meeting monthly. We developed our core development team, which consisted of the three entities that applied for the technical assistance. And along the way, we picked up some other partners, the Illinois Paddling Council, the Southeastern Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission, and the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning, which is our regional planning agency for the Chicago region, who have agreed to do the mapping for us, which is pretty exciting. In addition, Greg Farnham, who is the coordinator for the Rock River Trail Initiative, offered to provide his voluntary assistance in helping us deliver or to create our water trail. Um, he, like I said, he's had the experience of creating the water trail for the, the Rock River, which was designated about three years ago. And so he is also on our team, as is Angie from the Park Service. One of the things that we needed to do, we needed to follow uh, pr the process that was um, developed by the Park Service. And we created a vision, a vision for our team, for our project, was that the Fox River Water Trail from Lisbon, Wisconsin, to the confluence with the Illinois River in Ottawa, Illinois, provides suitable access to the public to enjoy the quiet and active recreation, scenic beauty, abundant wildlife, and historic and cultural features. Communities along the Fox River embrace stewardship and public engagement to provide a sense of place. And our mission of the Wisconsin-Illinois Fox River Water Trail Core Development Team is to develop and support a sustainable 223-mile water trail along the Fox River. We also had to create goals, and our five goals had to do with developing a, a water trail action plan, which incorporated the best management practices that I mentioned before, also to develop and promote an educational component for the public that recognizes geology, human history, uh, cultural and natural features, and wildlife. Also to protect and advocate for the environment and water quality of the Fox River and a program promoting the Fox River environment and features. We're also, we also designed a public planning process to engage communities and other stakeholders to develop and sustain the water trail. And this meeting tonight is part of our public planning process. We've been starting to go to um, different communities along the Fox River and present our idea for the water trail and elicit feedback. We will also be coming back later on with uh, once we develop our map to get comments from the public on that. And also to then um, identify a sustainable oversight partnership to guide the implementation, including programming, maintenance, and promotion. So now at this point, we are working on our action plan. We're starting to collect data. Eventually we will be creating maps that will be printable, that will be on our website that you can pull up on your smartphone if you wanna go out on a Saturday or Sunday and paddle a segment of the Fox River. We'll have all kinds of information as far as what amenities are available, what is the level of difficulty of paddling a certain segment, et cetera. We'll be creating a website, brochures, and we also have to create a plan which looks at the existing conditions along the river as far as access sites, dams, et cetera, and then look at what kinds of future improvements we might want to see. So right now, we are in the process of collecting data on the access sites, dams, and the different segments along the Fox River. It turns out that Wisconsin already had most of their data collected. And um, I started doing some research, which I've been doing for the past several months, to see what kind of existing data exists in the Illinois part of the Fox River. 
There were a couple of documents, a water trail plan that was done by Open Lands, and also a um, fishing guide that was done by the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, but both of these documents are quite old. The, the IDNR document is from the late 90s, and the latest update to the Open Lands document was 2007. So what we need to do now is get volunteers to go out on the river who are interested in collecting data for us. I have mapped the information that I collected from these two documents, which shows the access sites that were um, documented back then. Um, I've also been doing some research contacting the different public agencies along the river to see what other access sites there might be out there. But we need to collect data regarding what, what kind of existing conditions are there at these access sites. So we've been working on putting together a questionnaire which helps us collect this data. And we're almost done with it. It will be available on your tablet or smartphone if you want to go out on the river and bring it up on your smartphone and answer our questions and take some photos. You can submit it and it will automatically go into our database. Or if you'd like, you can print it out, write it on a piece of paper. The form can be printed and then you can send it in to us and we will include it in our database. Since Wisconsin already has some of their data done, or most of their data done, they're starting to build the maps that will be used for the water trail and um, the website, etc. So the Southeastern Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission is working with CMAP to put toge start putting together some of these maps. And this is an example of the first draft for some of the access sites and dams that are up in the Wisconsin area. In addition, like I mentioned before, we will be doing more public outreach and involvement, trying to elicit information and opinions from our stakeholders, and then also looking at what types of implementation we want to do once the, um, the trail and the plan are done. Um, like I mentioned before, there may be large gaps in the system where we would like to see more access points for people to be able to get on and off the river. So then we might be looking for some public lands that might be available and work with the landowners to see if they might be interested in creating access sites. But our ultimate goal is to apply for designation from the National Park Service for the National Water Trail System. So I encourage you to please join us. Um, this is my contact information. I also have some cards that I left on the table that has the website. Uh, the Fox River Ecosystem Partnership website has a special page that is dedicated to the water trail. I try to um, submit a summary each month of what we've accomplished that month at our core development team meetings. And um, also, if you want to, you can sign up to receive the newsletter monthly via email, and that will have the information, updated information about the water trail. Um, also, there is a sign-up sheet on the table if you're interested in volunteering to help us collect data. Do we want to ask questions now? Or? Oh, that's a good question. Do you know where v Village Hall is in Waterford? It's right next to Village Hall. Yes? Um, the main idea is recreational, however there is a conservation piece to it and um, 
we will be looking at water quality and how we might improve that. I don't know that we will actually take a stand on dam removal or anything like that. We will be looking at the dams. A lot of them do have portaging available to be able to safely get around them. Not all of them do, but some of them do. Um, but the Fox River Study Group is one of our supporters, and so we will be working with them and the data that they, and the modeling that they've been doing over the past several years. Yeah, I You probably know then that St. Charles has a proposal to possibly take out their dam and create a white water um, recreation area. Um, the city of Oswego <clears throat> did that a few years ago, and that may be what you're thinking of as far as the example that was being used. I thought that was a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In terms of what removal of the dam would do to the level of the river. Um, you might want to check the report that was done by the city of St. Charles. They might have some information about that in their report. <clears throat> in terms of the dam, how the dam, remo if, if they remove the dam, how it would affect it. Um, that is something we are considering putting on the maps or on the website. Let's say you want to stop in downtown Geneva and what is within walking distance for you in terms of going to get some ice cream or lunch or whatever. Um, the data we're collecting will include information about parking, about what type of launch is there, if there is one, how far do you have to walk, that kind of thing. Eric? Right now, we don't have any funding. We are, you know, a group of volunteers that work for local government. That it's part of our, our part of our our job. Fortunately, um, one of the things we're also doing is we're starting to look at the things that we are going to need money for, in terms of the um, the questionnaire that is going to be available on your smartphone. In that, there's no cost for that. One of our team members up in Wisconsin is very talented, and she's creating that. But <clears throat> in terms of the other things that we want to do, like the website, the brochure, the maps, and that kind of thing, we are starting to look at creating a budget and how much it would cost to do that. And then we're going to be looking at you know, grants and other sources of funding to help us do that. Jay, sure. Well, definitely important. When we, um, when we complete our application for designation, one of the things that we're going to have to do is get letters of support from different organizations, from local governments, regional governments, state governments, even the governor. 
our congressmen, our senators, et cetera. And we're starting to get those letters of support. We have uh, the village of Algonquin was one of our first. Uh, the village of Waterford and I believe we have a couple of others so we haven't started asking for letters of support but that's something that we will be doing in the near future from anyone who is a stakeholder along the river so yeah it would be very important for the municipalities to to support us and to understand that part of what we're trying to do is to um, help the municipalities and the other local governments and um, et cetera that are along the river in terms of economic development and showcasing their community. I think that there's a real opportunity for that. Any other questions? Okay, well, like I said, um, there, there are cards on the table with my contact information. If you think of anything, please don't hesitate to contact me. Brilliant. Thank you, Karen. Well, I gotta say, I've lived along the Fox River my entire life, and I remember my mom and dad telling me not to touch that water when I was a child. It was that bad. It's come a long ways. There's actually now rock on the bottom of the, of the river in places. And, and riffles and deep pools and, and amazing fish that can be caught. Um, it's, it's come a long ways in 30 years, 40 years. So I also remember reading the book um, Raising Cain about the, the fox and what he did in the 70s to help support the river and, and bring recognition to the river. So I think too many of us take for granted that the Fox River flows literally right through our city limits. And for years, most play, places turned their backs on it because that's where they shunted their dirty water or their dirty laundry and out of sight, out of mind. And those times are changing. You know, we are, we're not Colorado. We don't have the Rocky Mountains. We're not California. We don't have the ocean. But we have the Fox River. And it's an amazing resource. So thank you for taking this challenge. And I, I remember the first time I saw Karen give this, this talk, um, she said that when she... When somebody said, why don't you do the entire Fox River? She's like, what? I want to do Kane County. That's where I work. And they said, no, do the entire Fox River. And it's, it's a great opportunity. So, so I'm really um, excited to see, the, see this happen and in the trail designation that's going to come out of it. So a great segue to that is uh, another second presentation that's going to be by Eric Weck. Eric is one of the Natural Resource Committee members, and he's going to talk about a project that's tangential, but moving at a uh, completely different, um, not pace, but different, um, different lines. And so different. Very similar, uh, so I'm going to bring Eric up, and he's going to go through um, a presentation about the bike trails and the connectedness of the bike trail to the cities along the Fox River, which is a great, um, great compliment. Uh, thanks again to Karen for all of her excellent work on the Wisconsin-Illinois Fox River Water Trail Initiative. Hi, I'm uh, Eric Weck. I felt that the picture you see up here of Peter Ike, he's also known as uh, Cycle Peter, I thought, thought that his picture with his folding bike and kayak make for a nice segue from the water trail talk to this talk about the bike trail and the overlap of our common interests. I uh, currently serve as the Secretary of the Bicycle Tourism Network, or BTN for short. Uh, BTN was born out of the Fox Valley Sustainability Network's advocacy of ecologically friendly tourism and overall watershed sustainability. Uh, the Fox Valley Sustainability Network's stated purpose is to work with public and private sectors around the Fox Valley to create a healthy, sustainable, and vibrant Fox Valley, and my addition is ideally from Antioch to Ottawa and beyond. Uh, BTN is led by uh, Aurora attorney and former Kane County board member Bonnie Kunkel, along with Tom, uh, Tom Armstrong, former senior planner with the city of Elgin, as co-chairs. Uh, since late March of this year, We've begun working with community, business, and bicycle use leaders 
to review the concepts and actions which best serve the tourist population and increase commercial opportunities for local businesses in the process. Trails for Illinois has been an outstanding advocacy group in the area of sustainable tourism for years. The, the BTN has enjoyed the assistance of Steve Bucktell, their executive director, as we've gotten started. The World Conservation Union quote you see seems to set the stage nicely for my talk. Environmentally responsible travel to natural areas in order to enjoy and appreciate nature and accompanying cultural features, both past and present, that promote conservation, have a low visitor impact, and provide for beneficially active socioeconomic involvement of local peoples. To more greatly appreciate the impact and reach that each of the marvelous trails in Illinois has, especially the Fox River Trail, we have drawn on the analysis done by Trails for Illinois under their Make Trails Count survey initiative performed from 2012 to 2013. The rolling waters of the Fox and the extensive park real estate along its shores make it a very attractive destination for walkers, hikers, bikers, anglers, kayakers, anglers, kayakers, etc. It was this determined through survey data that there are annually about 90,000 visitors to the Fox River Trail. Much of the consistent traffic is along the Batavia, Geneva, St. Charles sections of the trail. The use of the Fabian Forest Preserve stretch was estimated at just over 90,000. The survey data were collected both electronically via sensors positioned along the trail and through individual trail user interviews. All manners of users take advantage of the trail in Illinois and elsewhere. This gentleman was on a cross-state cross trip which took him via Geneva and Fabian Forest Preserve. These folks were actually not in Illinois but on a ride in Indiana, and they happened into a town and ended up purchasing thousands of dollars worth of hardwood flooring. And I'm thinking that they had their flooring delivered to them. Making it easy for folks to find their way on and off trails into and out of town is key to facilitating their business. The data suggests that the vast majority of users are college educated, earn greater than $51,000 a year, use the trails for 10 or fewer miles at a time, and are predominantly local residents. Greater than, greater than one third of visitors spend money in the town when they visit it. Uh, they pri not, the primary draw of visitors' money is to restaurants and grocery stores, and $30 is the rough estimate of the average spend per visit. If you'd like to review the details of the survey data more closely, you may visit the Trails for Illinois Making Trails Count website. I have a little handout with some of this information on it if you'd want it later. Understanding the elements which attract and assist trail usage and identifying gaps with best practice can spur innovation and improvement. Branding helps set trails apart and provide for unique memories and experience. In the background of this slide, the Cal Sag Trail southwest of Chicago has chosen to incorporate a steel bridge arch in its marketing. They bring the arch theme across into their branding signage. Similarly, the signature element of the high trestle trail, ornamental metal forms which appear to undulate above the rider as she travels beneath, are further incorporated in their trail sign branding. The Fox River, River Trail has selected to depict the namesake animal with a river as its tail for its brand designation. 
survey data show that signage in many cases is lacking. Wayfinding for any traveler is fundamental to an enjoyable experience. With trails marked such as this one, it might just as well include a sign stating that there is no fun ahead. An accurate, up-to-date physical map or app brings comfort and assurance to all trail users. Various organizations and cycling groups publish and maintain these aids. City-specific trail maps are a plus. For the uninitiated, clear direction is an outstanding aid for getting to your, de your destination. Consistent reminders of the trail stewardship is assuring for first timers and a strong reinforcement through brand placement. A cardinal rule for effective wayfinding signage incorporates each of the three Ds, destination, distance, and direction. Along the Fox River Trail, a wayfinding and trail marking refresh is underway. Kane County Department of Transportation and Kane County Forest Preserve are expected to purchase signs for the Greater Fox Trail later this month. Trail owners, in the case of this sign, the Geneva Forest Preserve will install them. This sign is actually in disrepair and is scheduled for removal. Here's just one example of the choice of another trail who decided to paint their signs directly on the trail. This slide might be more appropriate labeled from town to trail or not. Interestingly, only 7% of survey respondents learned of a trail from a roadside sign. Signs in town or on a road which can help lead people to a trail they are either looking for or had not considered using can increase visitation rates. On the previous, I uh, went a little too quickly. There we go. On this slide, we can see looking westbound from uh, River Lane up to on straight State Street up to 31, there are no indications of a bike trail. If you were fortunate enough to turn south onto River Lane in Geneva, you would see a bike route sign, along with confusing set of do not enter and right turn only signs. As one continues south past the do not enter signs, additional bike route signs are visible. Confidence of being on the route is assured. However, which bike route or trail one is, on, one is headed to is currently unknown. This is a different view looking towards River Lane. When approaching the same River Lane from downtown Geneva, from any side street going west down the hill, this view particularly from Franklin, there's no visible, visible indication of a bike route at the intersection. There, when one approaches the stop sign, there are visible route signs, but the visible route sign seems to be the one going back to where the trail signs that we were just looking at led us. There is a sign to the south. So not, not the best signage getting out of town and onto the trail. Continuing on our original south direction, we see a bike, bike route sign without a directional signal and a street sign indicating all traffic goes to the right. When Lo and behold, on our left, as long as we are paying attention, is an unmarked trailhead. We figure the river is that way, so we go there. As we reach the Union Pacific West Railroad pedestrian bridge going west over the Fox, we see that there are no wayfinding signs indicating where the Fox River Trail is. 
I recently witnessed profound tourist cycling confusion at this intersection. As I was on a Sunday ride, I approached this junction from the Kane County Government Center, which is from the right side in this picture. There was an actual traffic jam consisting of 10 to 15 bikes at the intersection. The fifth annual, uh, the fifth annual Bike Stupid, that's spelled S-T-O-O-P-I-D, pub ride was well underway. Per their Facebook page, this event was started to support exercise, local businesses, and the love of beer. Their impaired condition and questionable legal footing notwithstanding, in the absence of signage, they were confused on the correct direction they were to travel and whether or not to cross the bridge. As I made it through the crowd and across the bridge, another stupid rider called to me to tell me I was going the wrong way as he rode to the west side of the river from where I just come. Countering stupidity through knowledge and access to the necessary amenities is always welcome. Information kiosks are traditional guideposts in towns and along the trail. Unfortunately, all of them are not created equally. This anonymous kiosk on the Hennevent Trail contains primary legal, legal disclaimer information, which is not most conducive to aiding the travel use experience. A frequent survey comment was about the general need for more water fountains and restrooms on trails. Riding north on the Fox River Trail at the Geneva Water Treatment Plant, it is possible to wonder about water fountains. A concerned attentive cyclist navigating the path to avoid other trail users might not notice that behind the hedgerow there's a concealed water fountain and also a Geneva City information kiosk. Lockport uses a nice clear sign which points the way towards its amenities. The Cal Sag Trail makes clear which way it is to catch the bus and get food, as well as where the bathrooms are. Back on the east side of the Union Pacific West Railroad pedestrian bridge headed north, based on these multiple views, there is no compelling reason for a visit such that a visitor would want to turn left without knowing that downtown Geneva and the Kane County Government Center are in that general direction. Once across the bridge where the stupid riders stalled, there is no signage to get the riders into town or the train station from there. Thankfully, with the new sign purchases from uh, Kane County Department of Transportation, amenity signage will be installed on the east side of the river. Uh, it's not clear that we'll get anything on the west side just yet. With sharp eyes, one can see the bathroom signs on the building just over there on the right. On the north side of the Allen Park building, there is a nice new maintenance kiosk and water fountain. Other amenities that riders through on certain trails might be interested in seeing is the curb appeal of shops which abut the trail having uh, softening scallop sidewalks. What keeps them coming back? The great experience and hospitality. This is an, ex is an example of cross promotion of the area recreational opportunities by a local business. In this case, bike trails are referenced by the hotel webpage. as well as this rural trail bike store, which actually allows payment for goods on the honor system. Promoting the trail and all its offers, all it offers through focused events brings tourist energy. If it's just for the t-shirts and trinkets, quality time with the family, or high stakes of athleticism. Trail use by tourists and enthusiasts is 
predicted only to increase. We are well aware that we have a great asset in the Fox River Trail. How do we take the next steps to make the trail experience better for users and more satisfying for local businesses? The Trail Town Program Survey and Guideline Format has been employed to great success in Pennsylvania in standardizing the analysis process and educating business owners and local government officials on the opportunities for improvement. The Trail Town Assessment breaks down the survey into categories of focus on the trail, the city, and the commercial interests which when attended to by the participating regional towns can lead to hallmark branding of a trail as a travel destination. Some of the categories explored through the trail town assessment include traffic and access issues checklists around sign safety, parking, business checklists around operations, accommodations, amenities, signs, types of food service, retail service, and other amenities and services, design checklists, visual appearance of the city, buildings and parking, storefronts, levels of graffiti, etc. If nothing else, the assessment format forces a bit of an outward looking approach to what a town and trail has to offer users. Okay, so what does that mean to you and me? The Bicycle Tourism Network converted the Trail Town survey format into an online survey monkey tool with the program's blessing. We view the completion of self-assessments through the tool as an educational opportunity which can highlight to civic leaders and promoters what they might focus on to better promote and improve their town's offerings as a trail town. Once self-assessments are completed, a focused one to two hour ride of the town will be completed by a representative for business leaders, city government, bicycle user groups, and the Bicycle Tourism Network to validate what the self-assessment data indicate. It's expected that each of the representative organizations will individually submit their own self-assessment for their responses in a given town. We want to complete this in early summer if possible. As multiple towns along the Fox River complete their test rides, a tra trail preview tour is envisioned for the fall of 2017. The trail preview ride is intended to expose community leaders and trail promoters to an holistic trail experience focusing along the trail, not just on individual towns. As a result of the trail preview, the group is expected to gain a further appreciation of the varying user experiences and opportunities for cooperation, which can include more consistent signage, expanded bicycle rentals, incre increased trail connectivity, collaborative promotion, and all other activities that make sense. In 2018, local leaders and promote, promoters will be called on to participate in rides put on by the Bicycle Tourism Network for the general public to pr promote the Fox River Trail overall in all of its wonder and joy. Any questions or thoughts? Yeah, dude. So, um, so your, uh, the amenities and the improvements are um, geared for increasing tourism and uh, the ability for the people who are unfamiliar with the trail to utilize and to find where they're going. You, are, are there aspects for those of us who use the trail um, for commuting and on a more regular basis? So 
just sit out there and they sit on the bench and drink whatever they you know, finish, finish whatever they bought or yep. pull out their granola bars and then it's like, oh, I have this trash, what should I do with it? Oh, there's this mulch down here, I think I'll leave it here. Right. Or the other day I was down there and there was a couple walking along and they had just picked up uh, after their dog and they're standing there holding this plastic bag kind of out of arm's length. And they're going, oh, uh, excuse me, do you know where we can drop this off? And I said, well, it's a ways away. Here, look, I'll, I'll just take it for you because I know where it needs to go. <laughs> because invariably, they, had I not been there, <coughs> maybe they were uh, responsible dog owners, but uh, it, the evidence along the trail says that there are people mm-hmm. who are beautifully bagged for dog waste. And then it's, I can't, I, if I turn around and I don't see a place to put it, I guess they don't care where I put it. Mm-hmm. Well, I, all I can say, Dave, is I think that through the survey, there's opportunity to free format information. And um, I think you as a, I'll call you a super user of the trail, if you will, uh, I'd be happy to give you the, the, um, the survey monkey link to fill out whatever you might want for any of the towns or do the entire survey maybe for the towns that you're most familiar with but uh, there's nothing I can I mean when you said put the garbage can there I imagine myself going to empty it so um, yeah. it's if the city if the city agrees for the maintenance piece then yes well that, that brings up the point that uh, certainly the Fox River Trail has uh, uh, an amazing number of jurisdictions that, that they, they claim responsibility for the trail, but when push comes to shove, who actually is out there taking care of things? Right? That little wayside, I think, is actually part of public works. By yeah, it looks like well, it looks like it's on yeah, uh, it's water treatment course. land. It, you know, yeah. and then you've got the park district for the trail and the forest preserve for the easement and all. So right. you have of all these different jurisdictions, and it's, it's confusing for users to know who to contact when they, when they see uh, you know, things that need right. to be done. I think it's confusing for the trail, trail stewards as well. I'm imagining that signage on that spot where everybody had accumulated, it's, that's probably Union Pacific Railroad real estate or something, I'd imagine, right under the trestle. Is the survey open to public? N- not it's not intended to be it's intended to be um, a single individual ideally from a bike club or from a uh, uh, what do you call it the downtown development organization or I can go back to I flipped through that a little too quickly um, it would typically be one individual from one of these main organizations, ideally, other than someone like Dave who spends his half of his life waking hours on the trail. Yes? Can I ask why? Why would you be open to more people? To get a more well-rounded understanding of what's going on? Is the purpose of the survey? No, the purpose of the survey really is to go to those people who have, either have a a say in buying signs mm-hmm. or use are really familiar with the trail already. I mean, once we want to get a first pass out to these groups, this is the first. This is the first meeting I've held, so this is ex- exposing. And we do have enough char- uh, characterizations that it can go out to the public. So if you're if you are interested in taking the survey yourself would be happy to get you the link. Same thing for you, Dave. So that's, if you want to take the survey, you're more than welcome. So the, so the purpose of the survey is just, this is just the first level. Is it going towards helping with urban initiative, I'm the, Well, the, the, this is the first level. The survey, we're looking for feedback from the people who really have a stake in the game. So bike clubs, they're on it all the time. Cities, park districts, they have to pay for the maintenance of signs. Business districts, they might get to the point of buying 
maps that they would want to fold up and have on their counters so that when people come in. So, I mean, the individual public input is okay, but we're really more interested in getting those people who have a strong vested interest in it such that they can be involved in seeing what other cities do as well. So this is, it's kind of like uh, peer group pressuring to uh, get to best practice. Oh, well, sorry. We've been talking about possibly in the future for um, the Rock River Initiative, which I talked about during our presentation. There was something like seven different trails, including like the one trail, the trail. And so they started out with their water trail, and then it just was like a domino effect where others were interested in creating other types of trails. There's even like a chocolate. But we've, we've been at it since April, so give us a few more days. So give me till yeah. November, <laughs> November 1st. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's the same thing. Okay. I've, it's a, we, the three people I mentioned, that's the entire, you know, it's a volunteer organization, three people, we're doing it all as best we can. Next week I talk to the uh, Fox Valley Bike and Ski. Following week I'm talking to the Batavia Bike Organization. And then I need to get on the agenda with the Batavia Council. We're over by five minutes, Jay, sorry. I made it. I made it under. I made it under time. We did. Okay. One other comment. Um, uh, I know people who use the trail who may be familiar with the local trail may miss. Like it, during your presentation, and you're talking about the things there, it's like it doesn't bother me because I know where that segment goes, right? Uh, but yeah. so so I would if if you told me very critical, I would try to look at it with the president. Yes. As though I were a visitor, uh, it yeah. may, it, certainly, if I go visit some other place, uh, you know, my wife and I took a ride on the Yellow Rose Farther Trail, and it was like, oh, yeah, how many miles is it to the next town? Or where are the bathrooms? Or, oh, look, three wide drive. Those are things that I suddenly came to appreciate that uh, might have I wouldn't have noticed if I was more familiar with, with the trail and being an everyday user and become a second nature that, well, I know where this goes. And, and I've had people stop me and ask me questions. And it's like, oh, here, let me point you in the right direction. And, and there you go. No, you're not in Bloomingdale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I just ask you to, knowing, knowing what you know, if I can put that ad, admonition on the in the uh, the header of the survey, just on the 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 title page, that think of this from the standpoint of someone who has never or rarely used the or trail. Possibly the standpoint of someone who just consumed uh, eight years. Yeah, ago. yeah. Well, I don't want to. I don't even want to go there. Well, thanks for your attention. Well, that concludes our show. So I really appreciate people coming out. Um, I, when we first pr uh, proposed doing the river trail, I, I think I said to the Natural Resources Committee, I would bet my life that 99.9% .9 of people of Geneva don't even know this is happening. 
So one of the platforms, or one of the things that we do, we're a platform for education and information, and this seemed to be a no-brainer to have Karen come in and, and do this. So please do pick up a card. Uh, if you're interested, her, her contact information is on there. You can contact uh, me. I'm the chairperson of the Natural Resources Committee. Uh, we're on the website uh, for the city. And if you have any questions, or if you want to become more involved, it's, it's what it, it takes. It takes people to be involved. So. Uh, if you want to be involved in anything involving the environment, the City of Geneva, please contact me. I'll gladly talk to you. I'll meet with you. I'll, I'll take you for a beer because I'm going to get your blood out of you one way or the other. <laughs> so thank you again for coming out. I hope you enjoyed the presentations. And again, please pick up a card or sign up and, and buy a rain barrel. <laughs> thank you.